Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hi, I'm Sandra, welcome to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be giving you a quick, non-spoilery review of Bar of Winter by H.M. Long. Bar of Winter is the third book in the Hall of Smoke series that is currently a quartet. The first book, Hall of Smoke, came out about two years ago, and Temple of No God came out one year ago. So in this quartet, Borrow of Winter kind of functions as the start of its own duology, and the first two books are kind of treated as a duology as well. They follow a character named Hessa, who is the aunt of Thray, who is the protagonist of Borrow of Winter. Now this book comes out um, in the United States on January 31st, but I think it's available in other places um, as of the 17th of this one. I only have my my Kindle version. I received an arc of this. I am waiting for my pre-order to arrive and I can't wait to get it. It's such a pretty book. Hannah writes adult fantasy books that are very, very light on the romance. So if you are looking for epic fantasy tales with warring gods and magic and monsters and creatures. She's a really great author that you should consider. Her books, or at least this series, is very Norse inspired. It's a very cold, frigid world, a very tough world. But one of the things that I really like about Hannah are her is just the way that she writes atmosphere. So you're very much embedded into the place where the story is set. And that's why I thought Bar of Winter was a perfect read for December, you know, January, February. So one of the problems in reading any kind of series, especially if a book comes out a year or longer between books, is the details can get a bit fuzzy. Hannah did this in such a way that totally felt organic fluid, wasn't info dumpy. She works in, in little bits of conversation pieces here and there and just little tiny details that kind of jog your memory on events that happened in the first two books, but you by no means have to read the first two books to enjoy Borrow of Winter. So a little bit about the main character of Borrow of Winter. Her name is Thray. When we meet her in chapter one, she is 16 years old, and we're told that this is also 16 years after the upheaval, which I believe is the big stuff that happened in book one, and then book two kind of deals with the fallout and the scrambling of that cr crumbling empire. So this book very much stands on its own, and it follows Thray, who is 16. So I don't want to give too much away about Thray because of spoilers, but her father was a villain earlier in the series and now she grapples with her own identity and her purpose and place in life and she feels very much alone and we learn very early on in the book, I don't think this is a spoiler at all, that she has a lot of siblings, half siblings. When we meet Thray in this first book, she is testing her limits, so to speak. Her father was an immortal. And so she has a lot of question mark, that unknown factor of whether she is at all immortal like he was. And so when we meet Thray, she's in a kind of a bad place. She's taking like very suicidal actions to figure out uh, what she is. And I'll give you a little bit, um, just the very beginning of the book so you can get a sense of Hannah's writing style. I smell iron dank fur and carry on breath, dirt too, damp with blood. I try to lift my arm, but it won't move. I start to stand, but I falter. I end up crouched, my good hand braced in the frost and cooling blood, the same blood that coats my face, my arm, and clothes. Across the creek, against the stark backdrop of trunks and dying undergrowth, a second beast prowls. She's massive, a creature between a bear and a dog that emerged after the upheaval, when so many strange beasts escaped the high halls. A son. Her mate lies at my feet, two arrows in his barrel chest and my bow snapped beneath him. Not that I could draw the weapon anymore, even if it had been whole. So we meet Thray and she has basically picked a fight with these huge massive beasts. So they're ha like half bear, half wolf type, just enormous creatures, kind of mystical creatures that appeared after the events that happened in the first book. She's essentially bleeding out and it just kind of takes off from there. What I also liked about each of the books in the Hall of Smoke series is they are each a very self-contained standalone novel. So if you didn't want to read the quartet or the duology and you just wanted to read one, you could totally do that. One of the treats of being a reader early in the series is that 
in this book you get to see like little snippets of characters from the earlier books. They make an appearance here and it's just really fun to see how they've grown after all of this time. So Bar of Winter, we meet Thray at 16, but then chapter two jumps forward in time and she's 25 years old. So she's a fully grown woman. She is in an arranged marriage in this village. She serves as the high priestess of this village. It's an Ingi village, so they are a little bit shorter, darker skin, black hair, and she is tall, very pale, white hair. So she sticks out and she's not really trusted considering some of the things that happened in the earlier book. So she's an outsider in that sense. But this book basically follows her on a journey to the far north so that she can learn about her roots and grapple with some of the bad legacy that her father left behind. And it's really a question of figuring out what makes family? Is it just blood relation? Is it a combination of blood and found family? Um, it's kind of a journey of that. And the end of the book is left very open and hopeful on the start of like a fresh new adventure quest kind of thing. So I really enjoyed this book. If you play video games, there's a lot to love about this book. Um, there was one part toward the end that reminded me a little bit of Zelda. Um, there's like a shield sledding type of thing. It's like shield surfing in Zelda, but it was such a fun scene to watch. And there's just monsters and there's giant sea serpents and there's battles and there are sibling spats of a huge magnitude. And it was just a really enjoyable read. I highly recommend this book. I feel like the themes vary from book to book. This book is more about just family and just, you know, struggling with your purpose and your identity. And if you are locked into a specific destiny because of you know what happened in the past kind of thing and I really enjoyed it so I really recommend this book definitely pick it up the final book is coming out a year from now and I will be picking up that one and look forward to that too so I hope you enjoyed this little quick discussion about the book uh, I hope it didn't give too much away but definitely um, support Hannah, pick it up if you're really into Norse epic fantasy, and happy reading. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if there is something that you want to know about this book. I'm going to link everything in the description box, but definitely, you know, comment and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts about the book, and I would love to talk about it more. So until next week, I will see you then. All right, bye!